What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Maylar. So last night, the Giants played the Panthers in their second preseason game. The Giants ended up getting a big win, 21-19. The Giants were actually up 21-3 at halftime. Carolina made a second-half comeback, scoring 13 points in the fourth quarter. Made it a close one. The Giants end up still winning the game, though, 21-19. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the game and talk about some plays that stood out. We'll start out with the start of the game. Daniel Jones and the Giants got the ball to start the game with the Carolina Panthers deferring the kick. So the Giants end up receiving the ball, and Daniel Jones and the offense went to work right away. Daniel Jones was 8 of 9 passing for 69 passing yards and a touchdown. Also had a quarterback scramble for 6 yards as well. DJ was absolutely locked in, very crisp and clean in the pocket. Showed a lot of comfort and a lot of poise in the pocket, which the Giants really need from him, especially considering how good he was last year. If he can take another step up, that would be huge for the Giants offense. I very much believe he's going to be even better this upcoming season. Darren Wall looks great with Daniel Jones. He had three catches for 30 yards. Also dropped a pass that was probably a 15 or 20-yard pass from Daniel Jones. Would have been Daniel Jones' ninth completion of the night. DJ would have been 9 for 9 passing. But either way, regardless, the Giants still end up scoring on that drive with the Daniel Bellinger receiving touchdown, 40-yard pass from Daniel Jones, which was obviously great to see. But DJ looks great with Darren Waller, three catches on four targets. As I said, Waller should have had that other pass that he dropped. But regardless, DJ still had a great night. 8-9 passing for 69 yards. Looks very smooth, calm, and collected in the pocket. Was very crisp going through projections. Had time to throw as well. The offensive line did hold up well on that first drive. The Giants ran 10 plays on that drive with 9 of them being pass plays and 1 of them being a Daniel Jones scramble. They really just go, 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 passing the ball from shotgun formation. It worked, though. The Giants worked the ball down the field very quick. First play of the game for Daniel Jones was a six-yard pass to Darren Waller. Then he found Darren Waller again for a 12-yard pass. Then he went short left on the side of the field to Darren Waller yet again. That was the pass Waller dropped, which would have been a 15 or 20-yard catch. Then DJ found Paris Kimmel for a 13-yard catch. Found Jalen Hyatt for a play in the backfield on a touch pass. Ended up being a negative three-yard pass play there, but also ended up being a legal block above the waist by Andrew Thomas as well. So that play would have been taken away regardless. Then a few plays later, Daniel Jones found Isaiah Hodgins, his top receiver from the end of last season, for a 20-yard pass play. Then found Paris Campbell yet again in the red zone. And then he found Daniel Bellinger for a four-yard touchdown reception to end off his night. Didn't come back in the game, unfortunately. I thought there was a chance he might get another drive. But then I saw how crisp he was on that first drive. And I said, there's probably no way they're going to put him back out there. He looked good already on the first drive. No way they're going to put him back in harm's way, considering how good he looked anyways on those 10 plays. The Giants defense did their job in the first half. It was a three and out for Carolina's first drive. Dexter Lawrence did have a neutral zone infraction right away in the first play of the game. He issued a couple penalties in last night's game, including a rough in the passer call, but it is only the preseason, so he'll figure it out. In the Giants' second offensive drive of the night, Tyrod Taylor came in. It was a three and out, but in his third drive, he found Jalen Hyatt for a 33-yard touchdown reception. Tyrod Taylor stayed in the pocket on that play, got absolutely drilled trying to get rid of that ball. Ends up finding, though, Jalen Hyatt for the 33-yard touchdown reception in the end zone. Hyatt did have to wait for it, but luckily still brought the ball in. He actually had a drop right before that, so it's good to see him recover and get the touchdown on that corner route. He... Lost the safety completely on that route. That's a play the Giants are probably going to use a lot during the regular season. His speed is just electric. Found a way to get open on that rather easily. He had four catches on the night for 35 yards and a touchdown. He stood out, obviously. And then Isaiah Hodgins led the Giants in yards. Two receptions for 45 yards. He ended up playing probably about the whole first half for the Giants. It was great to see Sterling Shepard back on the field last night since tearing his ACL last year. It's been 11 months since he was last on a football field playing in a competitive game. He comes back last night and looked pretty good, even though he had one catch for six yards. Great to see him running routes and on the field for the Giants. The longest tended New York Giant and one of the toughest plays the Giants have had in my day. If you look at it, he's been coming back from injuries year in and year out. Concussions, an Achilles injury two years ago, an ACL injury last year. It's great to see him back on the field. As I said, he only had one catch for six yards in last night's game, but I'm sure he's going to be making more plays when the season does roll around. Daniel Jones does love finding him over the middle from the slot position. So I'm excited to see what the Giants can do on offense this year. But last night was a very exciting game. Even though it is preseason at the end of the day, I know it is a game that's meaningless. It doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. It's great to see the Giants offense look that crisp, especially Daniel Jones and Darren Waller and Paris Campbell and Isaiah Hodgins. It's great to see the offense moving the ball that easily. And credit to Mike Kafka and Brian Dable, calling great plays. They're obviously making things easy on Daniel Jones and the Giants offense. There were guys open on just about every single player. That's something that, as a Giants fan, we're not accustomed to. We're not very used to seeing our receivers open 
that much, especially consistently play in and play out. You don't really see that for the Giants often. But last night, guys were open every single play just about. So that's obviously a great thing to see for the Giants, especially as a Giants fan. For years, we've just been watching guys have no separation between the cornerback and the wideout, making things tough on Daniel Jones. But last night was a different story. There were guys open on every single play, which obviously makes it easier on the quarterback. Paris Campbell was pretty good last night. Three catches for 23 yards. Also brought in a 13-yard catch. Bryce Ford Wheaton was a guy I said to pay attention to, and he had two catches for 24 yards on the night. Khalil Pimpleton, two catches for 18 yards. We'll see what happens with those two receivers in Bryce Ford Wheaton and also in Khalil Pimpleton. I'd imagine they're practice squad candidates as of now, but Bryce Ford Wheaton was a guy that Joe Shane mentioned in the third quarter in last night's game, that a guy that could potentially make it maybe as a special teams candidate. So we'll see what happens there, but obviously a big receiver can help spread the field for Daniel Jones. The Giants wide receiver room is though absolutely stacked. Jadon Mickens, Khalil Pimpleton, Jamison Crowder, Cole Beasley, Sterling Shepard, Jalen Hyatt, Isaiah Hodgins, Wondell Robinson, David Sills. The Giants are going to have some tough decisions to make to see who makes the team in the wide receiver room and obviously in the tight end room as well. I'd imagine this is the way things stand right now. Bryce Ford Wheaton makes the team. Colin Johnson maybe is a practice squad candidate. I had it reversed in my predictions, but I think there's a chance that Bryce Ford Wheaton takes the role of Colin Johnson. Now, considering Colin Johnson's been out with a knee injury since that Lions game last week, when you're hurt at this point in the season and it's preseason, you're trying to fight for a roster spot, being hurt, it's the worst time to be hurt since you're losing your chance to end up making it. And with Bryce Ford Wheaton playing, he now has the edge over Colin Johnson to make the team. If you look at the Giants' running back room, Eric Gray had a good night, five carries, 16 yards, and a touchdown, including a nine-yard touchdown run where he carried two or three defenders from about the four-yard line into the goal line, extending for the end zone, reaching in and getting in, breaking the plane. He had a good night. And then if you look at it, James Robinson struggled yet again, four carries, 10 yards. He's a guy that's definitely going to get cut. Jay Sean Corbett only had seven carries, four or five yards. Wasn't really a hole opened up for him on his carries, but he did add in some receptions. Three catches, four 22 yards on three targets. He's a guy that I think could make the roster as of right now. I love Gary Brightwell to make the team. With Gary Brightwell being hurt right now at this point in the season, obviously the same situation goes for Gary Brightwell as does Colin Johnson. You don't want to be hurt at this point in the season when you're fighting for a roster spot. I think Gary Brightwell can still make the team. But with him being out with a knee injury over the last week or two and not getting any preseason reps, that obviously does hurt his chances. But you really haven't seen much out of James Robinson. Matt Brady didn't even play last night. Last week, I believe he only had one carry for one yard. So you haven't really seen too much out of the running back room. And that's why I think there is a chance that Gary Brightwell still can make the team. As I said, I would have him getting the second most touches out of the running back room. Besides Saquon Barkley, I would be giving Gary Brightwell the RB2 touches. As for the Giants starting defense, they looked pretty good on the night. They did give up a field goal, though, at the end of the first quarter. But during that drive, the Giants had three penalties, including an offsides for Jihad Ward, an offsides for Dory Jackson, and then a third and nine on the 41-yard line. There was a roughing the pass call on Dexter Lawrence since he touched Bryce Young in the face mask. That was a tough play there, considering it would have been fourth down. The Giants probably would have gotten the ball back on a punt. But regardless, the Giants' defense did look pretty good on the night. One guy that really stood out to me was Jordan Riley who's a defensive tackle, a seventh-round pick for the Giants in this year's draft. He was all over the backfield every single play, it seemed like. He actually ended up with three tackles on the night with a tackle for a loss. Another seventh-round pick for the Giants that stood out was Javarius Owens, who had a very good night for the Giants in the defensive backfield. Seven total tackles, four solo tackles, and a pass defended. He had a very good night. It was great to see Cordell Flott play as well. He got some more reps with the second team, ended up with three tackles on the night. Tamont Fox who was a preseason favorite last year for the Giants. A lot of people loved him last year in the preseason. He had a very good night last night, three tackles, including a sack. Giants first-round pick from this year's draft, Deontay Banks had a good night, got involved in the run game, making tackles. He had a couple tackles in last night's game. Good to see him coming up and making plays on run plays. Kayvon Thibodeau had a sack last night. Great to see him get around the edge. Just about consistently, it seemed like Kayvon Thibodeau got around the edge in two or three straight plays, ended up with a sack on the night. And then one other play that stood out to me, was Kata Coughlin for the Giants. He had a couple pass breakups in last night's game in a tackle. He's got still fighting for a roster spot. has been on the team now for two or three seasons. I think he ends up making the team. He's made it consistently over the last three years as a special teams candidate and then has come in, in some third down situations. I think he ends up making the team yet again this year. Had two good pass breakups last night. And then Zion Gilbert, a Giants practice squad cornerback from last year, had two opportunities to get an interception on the last drive last night for Carolina. Jake Luton, the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, had two opportunities where he threw the ball just in the air and hit Zion Gilbert in the hands. Gilbert ended up dropping both of those balls. Obviously going to hurt his chances of making the team, but he was still a long shot anyways to make it. 
And one last player I want to mention is Trey Hawkins, who was a sixth-round cornerback pick by the Giants in this past year's draft out of Old Dominion. And he had another good night, had excellent coverage against Adam Thielen last night, including one play where he was beat by Adam Thielen and recovered well, stopping Adam Thielen from making a big catch on the sidelines. He was very good, also had a tackle in the run game as well. Exciting to see the Giants' day three picks all performing. Trey Hawkins, Javarius Owens, Jordan Riley. What a draft class for Joe Shane. And what a trade as well. I mean, even in the broadcast, they mentioned that the Giants took Kadarius Tony last year, a wide receiver that didn't want to play for the Giants, wanted nothing to do with New York. They traded him last year, took the two draft picks they got from Kansas City in that trade, and ended up getting Darren Waller, and then taking the other draft pick and getting Trey Hawkins in the sixth round. What a draft class for Joe Shane. What a turnaround the Giants have had over the last year since Joe Shane has taken over as a general manager. Great to see the Giants getting themselves back on track. And obviously, very exciting game last night with the Giants winning 21 to 19. Daniel Jones looked very crisp. As I said, that was the best part of the offense. I know it's just the preseason, but he looked very calm, cool, and collected in the pocket. And that's what you want to see out of your quarterback, especially considering with all the time he had to throw and all the pass plays that guys open every single play. That's just something we're not used to as Giants fans. We're not used to having time for the quarterback to throw, and we're not used to them being as wide open with their receivers, having so much room and so much separation each and every route. Tommy DeVito was a Giants backup quarterback last night, ended up getting the whole second half. I liked what I saw at him again. He actually had a play where he should have went down in the backfield for negative maybe four or five yards, ends up staying up and somehow getting back to the line of scrimmage and getting something out of nothing on a play where the Giants should have lost four or five yards. He was 9 of 11 passing in last night's game with 88 yards. Going to be a practice squad player for the Giants probably, nevertheless. But regardless, he does give it his all every single possession. I liked what I've seen out of him as a backup quarterback for the Giants. Obviously, Tyrod Taylor has a backup role already locked up. Considering Tyrod Taylor did have a good night last night as well. 9 to 13 passing, 90 yards and a touchdown. Did get sacked a couple times last night. Did add in three carries for 21 yards, including a 16-yard scramble. But great night for the Giants last night. Their last preseason game will be next Saturday against the New York Jets on NFL Network. I'll give a preview of that game and probably talk with the Giants during the week as well. But anyways, that's my recap of the game and a whole summary of plays that stood out to me. Obviously, the Giants' offense was one of the brightest spots of the game. Big win for the Giants, nevertheless. But seeing the offense move the ball that consistently and that easily is obviously something that all Giants fans are going to be excited about. And that's something we're not really used to, as I've said now about 100 times already in this episode. Anyways, I will conclude this episode. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a good one. Enjoy your weekend and take it easy. I'll see you guys in the next episode.